In this episode, we're going to be talking all about propagations, especially the rare aeroid varieties. Now, of course, it does not just apply to rare aeroids, but I'm going to be showing you examples of rare aeroids that I've already propagated. <laughs> So we're going to go ahead and get this started by showing you the pink princesses and showing you the varieties and ways we propagated these. Now these stem cuttings right here that we're propagating in water are actually some pretty huge cuttings. And take a look at that leaf right there. And this wasn't actually the biggest leaf. The biggest leaf fell off. But that should show you exactly how big of a plant this is coming off of. But not only that, if we take a look at the actual top cutting on this, these are pretty huge cuttings as well. As you can see, they are just as big, if not bigger than my finger. And this one towards the back, is actually almost a foot long. So again, pretty big cuttings on these ones. And I have to say, the bigger the cutting is, I think the plant has even more energy to be able to sustain itself. And these cuttings right here were actually made with only but a few roots on the actual cuttings. And as you can see right here, look at all those roots. Way more than what I would have wanted as a matter of fact, I should have potted this up a long time ago. This has actually been in here for about two months. And normally I would keep a cutting. I would say the longest would be a month. And I normally would want to pot these up maybe when the roots are about two inches long. And not longer than that, guys. This is way overgrown for me. And the reason why I say way overgrown, when you have it growing for so long in water and then all of a sudden you throw it in soil, sometimes it does have a negative effect on the plant where it can weaken the plant, it can cause the plant to sulk more wilted and sadder looking, and it can actually go into a recovery process and set the plant back because you're changing its condition up very abruptly and it's not used to that. And that is the reason why I don't like to have the roots grow longer than two inches long when I do pot them up. Because we gotta understand that these plants right here, because we did propagate them, they're already at a weakened stage. And because they are propagated, they don't have that much energy to work with. So we wanna give it the best conditions as possible. Now, because I was working with stem cuttings that were larger, I do have to tell you when I did place it in water, I did not notice any type of difference or change in its health condition at all. As a matter of fact, I didn't notice any type of desiccation, any type of wilting. The stem area remained plump. The leaves remained crisp and firm. I mean, this plant right here did not skip a beat at all. Now, what I did notice and can oftentimes cause panic, but oftentimes is just a natural process of propagating, is the fact that some of the leaves actually began to discolor. They became yellow, then eventually became brown, and then in the end, they completely dropped their leaves. Now, I say it is a natural occurrence in some cases, because if the plant does not have enough energy to sustain itself through the propagation process, it will actually do whatever it can to provide enough energy. And if it means to drop some leaves, that's exactly what the plant will do. Now, the leaves that actually fell off were two variegated leaves. And you guys know variegation and variegated leaves can actually mean weaker leaves as well. It has less of an opportunity to provide energy to the plant because it does not have the chlorophyll needed. So therefore, with the variegated leaves, the plant doesn't necessarily need that, right? So by losing the variegated leaves, what the plant actually did was drop the weakest link, which is kind of brilliant, if you ask me. And then one of the leaves were actually a lot larger than this one right here. I just believe that that leaf needed way too much energy 
than what it was willing to provide so it went ahead and dropped it again it can be a natural occurrence so don't panic don't fret guys so whenever you are propagating some of your main focuses should be paid attention to the leaves and the firmness and the stiffness of them also the stiffness and the firmness of the stem area the growth in the aerial roots and also the growth of the roots within the water and of course the growth of the unfurling leaves and just as long as you are seeing that those are all great signs of a good and healthy propagation and since I did bring up the unfurling of the leaves, I do want to take note that when a leaf unfurls, also don't panic if you notice maybe perhaps mutations in the leaf, perhaps it doesn't open all the way, or perhaps it's even smaller than the rest of the leaves. You guys know that usually the leaves will always become bigger than the prior leaves. Well, if you do get smaller leaves, if you do get those mutated leaves, know that that can also be a natural process. We are dealing with a weakened stem cutting, so therefore that may be just a recovery process it's going through as well. Now, the most important thing to monitor during propagation, of course, is the base or the bottom of the stem cutting. We definitely don't want any type of rotting because once this becomes rotted, it can quickly spread and take out the entire cutting. Now, if you do notice softening within the bottom tissue, you can cut away the infected area, making sure all rotted parts are cut off. And then of course, disinfect and then add cinnamon powder to completely dry off before you go ahead and put it in water or pot it up. And also as a tip because there are some people that will add supplements into the water just to give the plant a little bit more of a boost and you can do that by adding sea kelp supplements or even aloe vera water and in both cases they actually have growth hormones that can assist with the growth of the roots and also the growth of the leaves so yes that can actually help to give this plant or this cutting an extra boost. And these cutting guys right here are bare and leafless stem cuttings of the Pink Princess of which I did put them directly into the soil. Now of course I made sure that the cuttings or the wound area were completely dried before I did decide to pot them up. And this actually has been about three months since I actually potted these up. It took about a month or two before I even even began to see the growths coming up and then about another month for them to get to this point and they are very very teeny weeny they are so small and what really does amaze me is that even as teeny and small as some of these cuttings are you are finding that some of them actually have multiple growths as you're seeing here and also right here two growths off of this small cutting and here's yet another small cutting with one growth right here and also one growth at the very base. And I really don't know what's going on over this away. You see one growth right here, also a second growth right there and a third growth. And they're all growing from one growth point, guys. So majority of these cuttings are growing just fine. One of the main things that you do want to look for when you're taking tiny stem cuttings and you're placing them directly into the soil is you want to check on the actual firmness of the stem. You don't want to see any type of severe wilting or wrinkling or desiccation in the stem because that's normally a sign that something is going wrong. As in this stem cutting right here where we are noticing no type of growth at all but what we are noticing is severe wrinkling and as I'm feeling it is very mushy as well so we're gonna go ahead and take it out and just as we guessed it is rotted out Ugh, yeah pretty badly too and we want to get this out as soon as possible so that it does not infect the rest of the soil and eventually the rest of the cuttings and one of the worst enemies of actual propagations within the soil 
is over watering because that is the number one killer of a lot of our propagations within soil. It will cause the stem cuttings to rot. So what I would suggest is to water these as they become dry. Of course, don't let them dry out for too long. Not at all because that can also kill these babies too as well. But definitely do not keep them waterlogged and do not oversaturate the media. And because these are tiny little tots, you definitely want to treat them as such because they are far more sensitive than their adult counterparts. You don't want to overexpose them to sunlight. You want to give them bright yet indirect and filtered sunlight. You also don't want to expose them to extreme cold conditions as they will easily become weakened and even burn from the colder climate. And here's a tip guys, if you are growing your propagations within soil and you do notice that they are just wilting up rather badly and they're even having some extreme discoloration in the leaves, check the stem area out. And if you have a portion of stem that is savable because usually when you start seeing these signs of drooping and wilting severely, it may be cause of rotting. And nine out of 10, it is because of rotting. But if you do have savable stem area or portions of it that is still savable, then guys, you can literally take the cutting right outside of the soil, go ahead and cut the actual rotting portions away. Make sure it is absolutely clean, no traces of rotting. And then put that cinnamon powder on the cut, let it absolutely dry, and then put them into water, okay? That is a good method to rescue them. All of these right here, guys, were in soil and they were rotting. I absolutely thought this could not be saved. But if we take a close look, you see those roots right there? Those roots are growing after the fact, guys. So this is actually still savable. I actually have this one, which I thought was unsavable. Look how small the cutting is. But look, guys that leaf has begun to grow and hopefully this will unfurl as normal. Now it's very sturdy and firm compared to how droopy the leaves were. So again, it is very savable, guys. Even if you started it out in soil and they did not do well, go ahead again, cut the rotted portion off, disinfect the cut wound with peroxide or other types of disinfectant. Go ahead and put that cinnamon powder, allow it to completely dry and then simply place it into fresh water. And this right here is my beautiful pinky princess and she is at a pretty good size as you can see. But even with her size guys, I wanna show you the leaf of those propagation cuttings. Do you see that? <laughs> that is the difference, look how huge. So yeah, the pink princess can get rather large. So I'm very excited to get these potted up and get them growing. And on a future video, I will definitely pot these up for you. So definitely stay tuned for more. What we have right here, guys, is my makeshift terrarium propagation method in which I am using this container right here to seal, maintain, and retain moisture, warmth, and humidity. And what I have within this container is moistened sphagnum moss. Now you can also use a Ziploc bag because it works in the same manner. That warmth, humidity, and moisture can really help to aid and also speed up the propagation process. What we have within this makeshift of a terrarium is my Raphidophora heii, which is a shingle variety of aeroid and really does require a little bit more moisture so this type of propagation method is excellent for these varieties and let's go ahead and gently remove one of these out right there and as you can see this was the stem and look at that this is the propagated growth off of that stem right there and it's holding on to that sphagnum moss because that is where the roots have grown into that sphagnum moss. 
So this is actually a really, really great method for a lot of your propagations. Right here, guys, we have the hanging moss pole created from a pool noodle so that we could ensure that it would be lightweight. And what I'm using this for, guys, is my Raphidophora heii, in which we propagated also within the terrariums. And once they grew their roots, I went ahead and mounted them up onto this moss pole. And as you can see, the shingling aeroids are growing quite nicely. And right here, we do have some Monstera Thai Constellation cuttings. And as you can see, they are pretty thick. And when I did pot these up, they already had roots growing. And as you can see, one of them I'm laying to the side. And one of them I have kind of angled in a certain way. A portion of it is in the soil and the top part you can see exposed right here. And if you want to see the entire video where I show you two huge Thai constellations and we did a propagation and also a repot on them, you can go ahead and click on the link right here. It'll take you directly to that video. Right here is the other Thai constellation cutting that we did. And here is the actual cutting right here inserted into the ground and we were able to save two leaves so we're hoping that eventually a growth will grow and maybe even right here as well who knows fingers crossed but I can assure you one thing we will have to be patient now this particular one right here is a Jose Bueno and we actually made a leafless cutting this cutting absolutely had no leaves at all it was but a bare stem and if we take a look now you are seeing one growth you're also seeing a second growth but if we turn it around you will actually see a third growth right there. So three growths of this Jose Bono off of this tiny little stem cutting. And of course, you guys know, this will be quite a hardy and very full plant with very, very big leaves. So this is a nice stem cutting propagation example right here of what these plants or these propagation cuttings can do. Right here we do have an adult size Jose Bueno and even though it does seem at a very good size this is actually a miniature version in comparison to just how large they can grow and as a matter of fact take a look at that you see my hand against the leaves it does seem pretty large these leaves but this is only about a quarter of the size of what they can really get so these can get humongous Wanga, wanga guys. And what we are looking at right here are two stem cuttings off of the philodendron histatum, also known as the silver sword. And as you can see, we have two pretty nice sized stem cuttings on this one. One right here and also one right there. And this one in particular, which is a pretty nice size stem, this was actually a beheading. I know that sounds awful but it's just a propagation method where you take the top cut off of the plant. And on both of these, we actually just inserted them into the soil and made sure that they were properly watered. Now on this segment right here, this is actually just a stem cutting, period. And you can really see that right there. And if we take a closer look at the base area of one of the stem cuttings right there, can you see that? That is yet another growth point. And that's always a possibility that you have when you make a cutting is that it can make more than one growth, just depending on how much energy the cutting has to be capable of sustaining yet another growth. So with this propagation example right here, we have the potential of actually having three or more growths coming off of this plant. And this will eventually become a good, hardy, nice size, and very full plant. Here's an example of a grown silver sword right here. And as you can see, these plants can get pretty large as well. And this is yet but a small baby in comparison to just how large they can really get. So yes, this is a very beautiful plant that can grow very huge sword-like leaves. And again, this is just a quarter of the size of what they can actually get. And look what a massive difference from cutting 
two adult size leaf. Look at that. I've also propagated several of these variegated alocasias right here and it was such a cinch by separating the babies out, by separating and detangling the roots. And as soon as I detangled the roots, I potted them up right away. I watered them down extremely, making sure that this was completely saturated with water. And guess what guys, it did not skip a beat not a leaf died out at all and again it's just such a cinch to propagate these variegated alocasias by division but of course you can also propagate this via the stem area or the rhizome as well where you would make cuttings off of this and see those little nubs right there those are standby nubs they will actually grow new plantlets so when you make those cuts all of these plantlets will come from the base and also from the bottom of that cut as well and you'll have two sections that will actually grow plantlets so that's another form of propagation on the alocasias. I've also propagated several different varieties of different types of vining aeroids. And whenever dealing with vining aeroids, you really wanna look for that ring around that vine or the knuckle of the plant, because that is normally where the roots will grow and also where the new growth of the vine will branch out as you can see right here. So in order to propagate these, you would have to cut in between so that you can go ahead and plant this area. You'll have the new growth coming up and then also the roots growing as well. Now, if you want the most growth out of that vine cutting, you definitely wanna go ahead and make a cutting out of the very top portion. And you wanna give it some space. I would actually cut maybe right there or right there some people will cut shorter, but again, as I stated, more vine that you have, you will actually have more energy for the plant as well to sustain new growths. Now you do have the potential of propagating each segment if you wanted to, just as long as you cut right in between the ring around or the knuckle of the vine. But of course, if you have smaller portions of that propagation, it will take a lot longer and also you may have a weaker plant. In a lot of cases, when you do have a weaker plant, that plant will revert back to juvenile state. So therefore, if you had an adult sized leaf on the vine, well, if you have a weaker portion of propagation, it can be weakened so much in fact that the leaf growth will actually be a juvenile leaf no longer a mature leaf and here's yet another tip you can use powdered rooting hormone to assist you with the root growth of your propagation also there is such a thing called cakey paste which is normally used for orchids in creating baby growth so you can do that as well with your aeroids put it on the nodes and that can assist in boosting the growth of a new vine or a new growth point and there you have it folks that is my take and also my examples of propagating rare aeroids and also other aeroids as well now of course if you guys have some more information or some more tips and tricks that you would like to share as well please be sure to post those comments below because we're always open to learn i thank you guys so much for tuning in and do appreciate each and every one of you guys all and i will see you guys later on my next adventure. Bye-bye for now. Mwah.